God is so good. God is awesome. And God loves you and you and you and you and me. Yes, God is so good. Turn to the person next to you and say, God is so good. God, let's give God a hand clap of praise. God gives us everything. He gives us life. He gives us his word. That is a word that tells us of his love. That It's a word that, that guides us. It's a word that when we're down, it can pick us up like nothing else. It's a word that reminds us of who we are. He gives us a sacrament, as you learned in your Baltimore Catechism, sacraments are outward signs instituted by Christ to give grace, to show his love and his favor, unmerited. And, and he gives us the sacraments to unite us closer to him. He gives us his sacraments to strengthen us for this journey that we have called life. And God is so good. He gives us his mother, Mary, to be your mother and my mother. He gives us his mother, not, not just as a title, but he gives, us to, to her, uh, gives her to us to show you and me how we're supposed to live in this world that sometimes can be so crazy. He gives us to her because like any mother who loves her children, and you hear this every week. She intercedes for us. And he gives us his mother to be a model for us of faith and faithful living. And so let's give God a hand clap of thanks for his blessed mother. And so I say to you, Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. In this se holy season of Advent that we're in, in this beginning, whenever we have a new beginning, God wants us and calls us to start afresh, to, 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 to remind ourselves, to renew ourselves in this journey of faith. And he gives us John the Baptist, and you heard about John the Baptist yesterday as one of the great models. And the other great model he gives us is Mary, to show us how to prepare and show us how to say on a daily basis, even in the, the most difficult times, how to say yes to God. Now this Thursday, we celebrate a great feast showing God's amazing grace to his mother and your mother. We celebrate the feast of the Immaculate Conception. And the first reading you heard this morning, in case you had your missalettes, was not what you would have found on the first Monday, but rather that's the second reading from the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. And this is a feast both about God and about Mary and God's goodness to his mother. And so today as I talk about this feast, I want to preach on the theme Amazing grace. You see, this is a feast that we celebrate in which God sanctifying grace comes into Mary's life as she was conceived. Let me say that again to be very clear. As she was conceived in the womb, God blessed Anna and Joachim at 
Mary's conception, that she was free, that was the grace, that was the favor he gave her, that she was free from original sin. Sometimes when you have the Feast of Mary, I mean, it's December 8th. Well, if you go back nine months, we come to September 8th. That's when she was conceived. And so what we celebrate is that, that, that God gave Mary this, this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful gift. And, and Mary, though, is not the first person to receive this amazing grace. Because if we think about it, Adam and Eve had God's amazing grace. You see, just because we have grace doesn't mean that we always say yes to God. And, and, and so, so we, we celebrate this, but she's the first person since Adam and Eve. And as we pray our novena, we end with this, and so I ask that you repeat with me. O oh Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you. O oh Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you. O oh Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you. That's what we celebrate on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, that Mary was conceived, that God, she found favor, even before she was born, as she was conceived. And, and, and we know that Mary lived her life. She got this amazing grace, and sometimes we, we sort of put her in heaven. But she lived on earth as a child, just like any child that you may have. Uh, our grandchild, they, they cry, they, they, they want their, their parents to care for them and, and to feed them. And I'm sure growing up, she played with the other children in her neighborhood. As, as a teenager, as she was approaching marriage, I'm sure that all the, the problems are there. But what made Mary so wonderful is, is she always understood how much God loved her. And she made God a daily part of her life. God had given her this grace and she always appreciated it. And, and so, so she was always, it wasn't like there was one day on, on March 25th that she happened to go and say, I think I should pray today. But that was rather something, that was a, 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 a style, that was what she did every day. Wanted to be, she, she was in love with God. And that's something that God calls us to be in love with God. To understand how amazing he is to us. And so Mary was able to say yes when the angel came. And, and, and today as we celebrate God's amazing grace that we see in Mary, I want to focus on four things. First of all, God's amazing grace. But not just in Mary. Because like any mother, how many mothers or grandmothers do we have in here? Like any mother, you always want the best for your children, amen? You, and, and, and most times when you're a mother or a father, you, your life isn't about simply about what's in this for me, but you're, you're trying to teach your child the best things and so so God's amazing grace came to Mary and, and secondly that, that that Mary's daily love for God you see when God is so good and, and Mary recognized that she daily loved God and that's what we're called to do not just when we're down and out, not just when nobody else or we can't do it ourselves and, and thirdly that Mary was faithful to this grace that you would always say yes to God. She'd listen. And the fourth is our call to respond to God's amazing grace. Because as a mother, we, we can look at the Feast of the Immaculate Conception and, 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 and we need to honor Mary, but the best way you honor someone is to follow their example. Amen, church? And so that's what this feast is about, because it, Mary understands, as I reflected on this, this feast, I, I thought of that and I said, Mary wants to teach us 
that we too receive God's grace. And that letter from the, the Ephesians was, was so powerful. And it, this is, it, it says, brothers and sisters. Mary, if she wrote what it said, sons and daughters. Blessed be God, the Father of Jesus, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. So yes, we acknowledge that Mary's been blessed, but what the Word of God is telling us and what Mary always tells us whenever she made an apparition was to grow closer, that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. And then it goes on, and, and, and in baptism, even Mary was conceived without the stain of original sin. In baptism, we have the stain of original sin taken away. That's amazing grace. And that calls us to live a special way. And, and then, then as Ephesians continues, it, it says, God chose us. And, and in, in his love, he destined us for adoption in himself through Christ Jesus. So just as Mary is, is the mother of God and, and our intercessor and the queen of angels and saints, God chose us. He chose us uh, to, 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 to be holy and blameless. Truth be told, we know we're not always that. But he still calls us and he gives us the grace to do that. And it says, in, in his love, he destined us for adoption, which basically means we're special in God's sight. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're special in God's sight. And that's what, what, what God, and it says, in accord with the favor of his will. And so as we celebrate this feast, Mary was able to say yes, not just when it was easy, but in the most difficult times, as she stood beneath the cross, as she saw the, the, the couple at Cana, as, as the angel Gabriel came and she didn't understand what she was able to say, and that's the amazing grace that God gave Mary, but he also gives us. And, 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 she, and, and what, what Paul says, it says it's all about giving God the glory. And that's what Mary was about. It says in Christ we were chosen. Mary was chosen, but we too through grace are chosen. We're given a purpose according to his will. And so as we celebrate, get ready to celebrate this feast that we, we every Monday, in a certain sense, remember. Understand that it, it, it's, it's Mary teaching you and me how to, to, to recognize God's love, no matter what we're going through. This is what God calls us to. This is what Mary calls us to. And so as we come to celebrate and to remember the, the amazing grace of the Immaculate Conception, understand that God has given us in his word, in his sacraments, in life, in so many ways, in his mother Mary, that amazing grace to say yes, not just once, but day in and day out, time after time. And so as we celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, we celebrate a feast of God's amazing grace. So let our hearts cry out, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. When we've been there, when we've been there, ten thousand years bright shining. We've no less 
days to sing God's praise. Then when we first begun, Mary, by her yes, sang God's praise. You, by being here and honoring Mary, sing God's praise. And we need to ask God to help us each and every day as we seek to follow the example of our mother to recognize his amazing grace in your life and mine. Amen.